Hello everybody, it's Juliet here with another project for you. Um, so today, well I made this necklace um, which I'm going to be teaching you but it's going to be in two parts. So today what we're going to be learning is how to make this central part and as you can see it um, it sticks up quite a bit. Here's the back. Um, but it's very pretty. It would actually make a really, really pretty ring. Um, like I nearly made a ring, but I don't really like making rings because everybody's fingers, you know, a different size and um, I don't really like wearing big bulky rings. So um, I didn't, I decided not to make a ring, but certainly you could make a ring. Um, but anyway, so I've been laying out here for my next necklace. This one is a kind of in blues and greens, but I want uh, this one to be more like purplish, um, I guess. And actually, you're going to be very surprised, but the crystals around this one are exactly these in that order. Uh, it just depends how the light hits this one, whether it looks blue or um, kind of purple or red. Um, and I've changed the central one from a blue to a more of a like lavender. Um, and then I'm, I'm think I'm going to use these like reddish ones as as the little accents here on the sides. Um, and then it's here I use, uh, for, this is from Baby Craft. I was using this one, number 10, um, for these, but I think I'm going to use this number nine color, which is a pink color. Um, so I've just been choosing my colors. Um, and these... Um, are also from BB Craft, and they came in this big uh, kit of um, bugle beads. Uh, but all of these things are in my unboxing videos. The last two, I think this one was from two times ago. And I used this color right here. It's a kind of muted grayish brown color. And I thought about using this, but I think I'm going to stick with that. Um, on this project on this colorway because I, I just like the way it looks and then the crystals also came from BB Craft in this little um, kit so I've been using these ones and it's just mixed like you don't know what, what colors you're going to get so um, I just played around with the colors until I found a pattern that I liked and kind of thought went together. Then the little one in the center is this um, out of this corner and then these um, marquee shapes are these ones. So I just I've just picked out some colors that I think will look interesting and what I like about this project so th yeah these this is available from BB Craft dot com and this is available these are the three millimeter rondelles so um and then the bugle beads also are from bbcraft.com so i will put links in the description for those three products that i'm using do go and check them out they've got some great um fun product i uh, got a random bugle bead must have fallen out there um they've got some really great um, products that are you know very reasonable they have good customer service um, so yeah so what we're going to be needing for this is you're going to need the six central I don't even know what you call this shape uh, kind of pointed <laughs> leaf shapes um, I will measure that and let you know what size it is it is about, looks like about, hmm, nine 
centimeter, uh, nine millimeters, sorry, by six, might be five, I don't know. So uh, whatever shape that is, pear shape, I guess. Um, uh, so yeah, we're just going to be working on this middle section. So you're going to need for that, you're going to need some three millimeter, I'm using these three millimeter rondelles, um, crystal rondelles from BB Craft again in the description, which go like around the edge here. And then you're going to need some 11 O's, which are, I'm just using those, you can't even see them, they're just in the middle. And you're going to need some 15 O's, so I'm using these kind of metallic finished, um, they're like gold and silver, because I want it to look kind of vintage. And mixing the colors, this is what I like about the kit, is when you mix the colors, um, it gives you that kind of vintage look. But we're not going to be using these. Um, so yeah, there'll be a second video where I show you the rest of the project. Um, and then for stitching the center, I'm using Fireline 6 pound in crystal. And um, I will just get some on my needle and we'll get started. Okay, so I've got about <clears throat> four feet of fire line on my needle and I am just going to leave a sort of six inch tail so I can weave it in at the end. So what you're going to do is get your beads, your um, sh rhinestone shapes, marquee, uh, not marquee, um, whatever shape this is, <laughs> pear, teardrop, I don't know. and you're going to figure out what order you want them in and then you're going to form them into a straight line like this okay because it makes it a lot easier when you're stitching to just know that you're going to pick up this way this way this way this way otherwise it won't necessarily come out in the order that you want it in so for example if I were making two of these because I wanted to make earring I would lay out both of them and then I'd straighten them out um, so yeah, figure out your colors and then lay them out in order so that you know you can um, pick them all up in the right order. Okay, so you're going to pick up through, if you look at these little settings, they have two holes um, on each, so they have one there and one at the back. So we're going to be using the two holes at the near the point. So we're going to go through those. And then we're going to pick up two 15 O's. Okay, and then we're going to go through the next two holes of the next. and then two, and just keep going until you've picked all of them up. So you're picking up two 15 nodes in between each of your um, rhinestone. Okay, and then at the end, after you've picked up your last one, you'll need to pick up two more. Okay. So I've got them all threaded on. Let me just move this out of the way. There we go. Okay, so we've got them all threaded on in order and we're going to go through all these beads again 
to form a ring and to reinforce. So make sure that you're getting through everything. And also you need to just make sure when you're using these little crystals and settings that you're not um, accidentally not coming out of a hole. Like sometimes you can accidentally like stab up through the gap where the setting is holding the crystal. So just make sure you're actually going through the hole with your thread and not in the wrong place. Okay. Um, come on, just this little two. Okay. Okay, so I've gone through all of those again. And then I need to go through the last rhinestone one more time just to form an actual circle. So there we go. I, it is a circle. It doesn't look like a circle. But it is, I promise. Um, now we're not going to tie any knots in this at this point because um, we're going to not want to block any holes. So I'm coming out here next this hole here and I'm just going to go into the second set of holes on the same crystal. So the back pair of holes. Okay, so I've, I've come out the front ones and now I'm going into the back ones. Okay. So now we're going to go around this way between all of the back holes and we're going to pick up one, let me move this, hang on. We're going to pick up one of our um, 50 nose, then we're going to pick up one of our three, millim three millimeter rondelles, and then one more of our 50 nose. And then you're going to go through the next pair of um, the next holes on the next crystal. So a 15, a 3 mil rondelle, and a 15. And just go all the way around like that. And the last one, so a 15, a rondelle, and a 15. Okay, and then you're going to go through the next 15. So we've now got this, and it's going to kind of stick up a little like that. Um, so now you're going to pick up two 15s and then you're going to pick up one of your um, bugle beads and then you're going to pick up two of your 11 O's. Then you're going to pick up another bugle bead and then you're going to pick up two more 15s. Okay, so you've got two 15s, a bugle bead, two 11s, a bugle bead, two 15s. And you're coming out from this 15 right here. We're going to go into this 15 that's on the other side of the same crystal. So came out this. So if you're working this way, just make sure that you go into the other 15 on the other side and then through your crystal and then back through that fifth same 15, okay? So in one and out the other, whichever way you're working um, in order to kind of form like a loop like this, okay? It's gonna go up like that. All right, and then you're gonna pass on through the next the um, three millimeter rondelle through the 15, through the next crystal, and then through the next 15. Okay, can you see that? Oh, 
Well, you can. Okay. And if that wants to stick off there, that's fine. Just let it. Okay, so now we're going to pick up two 15s. One of our bugles. And I'm kind of eyeballing just to see that there's no broken bits on these because sometimes on bugles, the way they're manufactured, they just tend to get um, a little bit ragged or a little bit broken sometimes. Or if there's one that's super short or super long, don't use that one. <laughs> okay, so pick up your bugle, then you're going to pick up your two 11s. But now we don't need to pick up another bugle because we have a bugle right here. So we're going to go down through this bugle. So we're coming out this far side of this crystal. We're coming out. We're going to go down here. Give it a little tug. And we're going to pick up two 15s. And then we're going to go into the 15 right here. And the 15 here that we started with. And so that is like our first complete unit there. So you see what we're doing? We're kind of building a little fence around the middle. Um, so we're going to continue on through the rondelle, through the 15, through the next crystal, and then through the next 15. Okay, so I've gone through the rondelle 15, crystal, and 15. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So you pick up your two 15s, you pick up a bugle, um, and you pick up your two 11 O's. You go back down through the bugle that's there. Make sure you don't get snagged on anything. Then you pick up two 15s. You go into the 15, into the crystal, into the next 15, through the rondelle through the next 15 and through the next crystal and the next 15 to get in position. So I've gone through all of that and I'm in position to do the next one. Into that 15 O, through the crystal, into the next 15 O. Okay, I'm going to have to do that in a separate movement because I can't get through all the way through the crystal, the next 15, the next crystal, and the next 15. Now, we're back to where we started, but we still have to close up uh, this bit right here. So we pick up two 15s. go up through the bugle that's already there. Okay. You pick up your two uh, 11s and you go down through that bugle that's already there. Um, that's my tail in the way again. Give it a little tug. And then your two 15s. And through the 15 o through the crystal, and through the next 15 o Okay. And just give that a tug so it kind of tightens up. Now, it's still going to be a little bit wobbly, but it's, it is tighter than it was. Um, okay. So now you're going to carry on up to this row of um, 11s up here. So just go through the two 
uh, 15s and through the bugle to get up there. And then go through two of your 11s, whichever direction you want to work is fine, it doesn't matter. Okay, so. Um, hang on, let me just look at something really quickly. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, no. Go through one of your um, 11s. That was the mistake. So just pick one. Just If you went through two already, go back through one of them. Okay, so we're just going through the first 11 there. Okay, so now you're going to pick up your little um, so on that it goes in the middle. And I'm coming out this one. So look at the crystal directly opposite. I'm going to go into the opposite side. So this one right here. Okay. Now I'm going to go through the next two. And then I'm going to sew through the sew on hole here through to the opposite side. Okay, see what I'm doing there? Because it has four holes on it. And here I was coming out the one right next to the bugle here, so I'm going to go into this one opposite right next to the bugle and go through those three, the next three. Okay, and now I'm going to go all the way around the 12. If I can get into, a, if I can get into it, come on, there we go. <laughs> just to tighten up this ring and kind of help um, ground it. I've lost count where I started. I think I've gone, well, I'll go through the next two just to make sure. Okay, I think I've gone all the way around now. Okay, and now we're going to embellish this. So what we're going to do is you are going to, let me see. Um, whichever one you're coming out of, it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to pick up three of our 15 O's. Okay. And you're going to skip the next one bead and go into the next one, 11 O. So you've got three like that. And then you're going to do the same, pick up three. 15 O's, skip the next one 11 O and go into only the next one after that. And what we're doing is we're creating a little like pico around it. So you're going to do this six times and one more. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make it stand up a little bit. See how on here, it's almost like it's um, like a setting, you know, it's it sort of sits up like it's supposed to be like a setting of a jewel. So, um, so to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to go up that fifth, first 15 of the set of three. 
and then you skip the second 15 and then you go into the third 15 and then you skip right over to the first 15 of the next set of three. Okay, I can't do it in one shot. But when you pull, you're going to want that little 15 that you skipped to stand up. And then when you join, it's going to make these two kind of pull together and upwards a little bit. So we're just going to just go around the second, the first and the third of each of the 15s and don't go into any of the 11 O's on the base row. Okay, so I'm going into the first 15 and the third 15 only. And we're going all the way around and it'll tighten up. See how that's tightening up to kind of stand up a little. Well, I need to go through the first one just to join these two up again. So that's what I'm doing right now. Like I've gone through this. I'm, I, you can go through the point on the last, um, you know, when you're going through the very last join because you've already pulled the point up. Okay, so when you get back down to your last 15, just head on into the um, 11 as well that's below it. Okay, and then you're going to work your way to wherever the junction is of the nearest um, bugle bead. I happen to just be at it right now, and I'm going to go down this bugle bead right here to get back to the edge. Okay, so the only step we have left now is we're going to um, join this up to kind of solidify uh, so it doesn't move at all. And then we will be done with this unit. And like I said, it would make such a pretty ring. You can see there. So you could just put come out these 15s, make a band, however you wanted use herringbone or you could use peyote or whatever you wanted. Um, okay, so I'm coming out the bugle. I'm going to go down through these three uh, 15 O's. On, so we, you should have like two little triangles of 15 O's at each corner um, with the crystal in between. Then you're going to go through the crystal but not the 15 o just the crystal if you can't get through just go through the 15 o and then back through go back through it okay I made it without going through all right so just like we did before at the very very start um, you'll remember we um, we moved along the side of the unit we're just going to do that so I'm coming out right here I'm just going to go into the same unit on the same side so there will be two threads visible on the bottom of your work but nobody's going to look at that so don't worry about it so there we go so I've got thread running right there I can't even see where the other one is right now it's there somewhere <laughs> anyway okay so now you're going to carry on through, so I've just come out this hole here, I went through here and through here. You're going to go through these two, and then you're going to pick up three um, of your 15s again, just like we did at the top, and into the next two. And you're going to add those all the way around. So pick up three, go through the next two. And you'll notice they're a little lumpy, a little bumpy, a little loose. We're going to deal with that in a second.
Okay. It's kind of hard not to go through the, the setting sometimes. And another three. I've actually got exactly the right amount of thread for this, so I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you get like way too much or way too little? Um, okay, so I've just gone through the last two there. Now I'm going to go up the first one. And just like we did before, we're going to skip the middle one. And then the way I like to do this, because you're working up and down, is I, you need to go through the next four in order to create a point. But I find that hard to do, so I usually go through three because it's facing down and just make sure that this little guy that you skipped is going to stand up. So I move my thread to the inside of it, the inside of the circle, because I want him to like jut off that way. Okay, so then I go through one, because three plus one is four. So this is the middle, and then I go through the next three I mean, you, if you guys can get through all four, go ahead and do it, but I just find it tricky, so I go through three. Or if you want to do two and two, that's fine as well. Just make sure that the bead that you're skipping goes outwards like that. And this will tighten up the entire ring, um, and then your unit will sit really, um, it'll be done and it will sit nicely. It is quite high, like you can see it does jut up quite high. Um, but in the necklace that's, that's nice. It's, uh, like for an earring, I don't know, the balance is going to be off. You'd have to figure out a way to get it to hang from like here. Oh my goodness, that is so blurry. Yeah, you'd have to figure out a way to get it to hang from about here because if you hang it from back here, it's not going to... Um, if you hang it from back here, it's going to like tilt forward. So you're going to have to figure out how to hang it from like the edge of the bugles. Um, anyway. So here we go. So I've gone through... I need to go through one more and then skip that one and go on around and when you finish um, just tie in both of your threads just wind them around whichever way your threads are going um, tie them in on this inner ring here because you're going to be sewing through the outer ring when you're if you decide to make the rest of the necklace you're going to be sewing well even if you don't if you're making a ring you're going to be sewing through these outer beads so you don't want to block them up anymore um, and for this necklace I use 10 pound um, wildfire to make it stronger so uh, you really don't want any extra threads around the outside um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and finish this and then I'll show it to you when I'm done. Okay, so I finished um, pulling up my points and I made sure that my thread was on the inside of each one so they pull um, outwards. Oops. Uh, so now I just need to tie off my thread and to do that, I'm just going to go through a few beads and then I'm going to go under my work and see the loop that forms here you just put your needle through there and then very gently just to make sure that it's the knot is forming where you're coming out just pull slowly and then you've got a little knot there so then you can just go through a few more and do another knot So let me go through these. 
Um, and it's okay. I like I'm just going out the points that I created and tying the knot right next to the point. Um, so again, I just went under there, formed that loop, and then I'm very slowly pulling to make sure that it goes in the right spot. Okay, that's good. And then I can just go through a few more beads. And so I've got two knots there. That's enough. And then just get some scissors or your thread burner. And you can just cut that. There we go. Um, and then I'll just do that the same thing to the other tail um, here. Once I work out where I'm coming out, I'm coming out coming out this crystal here. So I'll work that way around um, into those two beads and around that way and do the same thing. And then that will be that unit finished. Um, and unlike this one where I did the light color on top, I'm actually going to position mine this way up um, so that the, the pinkish color is on the top this time um, just to help it with the purpley pinky. Um, but it's quite cool how exactly the same um, setup just by changing the middle accent and the the colors around the edge, you can completely change the look of a piece of jewelry. And who would think that all of these colors, a kind of gray and a blue and a pinky, reddish pinky one, and a, you know, a, um, peridot and a, like a green, fern green would all go together. Um, so I encourage you in your beading travels to kind of play around a little bit with color because you'd be surprised what what goes together um, anyway okay I will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching uh bye for now